everyone. We are, uh, oh, the mic is still working. We are going straight um, to Long Harbor, Newfoundland, which is uh, west about 30 miles. Well, yeah, 30 miles. We'll be there in an hour. It's dead end, but uh, if we leave for the ferry right now, we'll be at the ferry seven hours early. So we're going to kill some time, go to Long Harbor. Uh, BB-8 thinks he found a trail that goes back to, um, that goes south to the harbor. I'm uh, skeptical, but we're going to try it for a little bit. If we, you know, if we, um, if it works, then great. If not, we'll come back through here for a late lunch, like a 2-3 o'clock lunch. And then down to the ferry. So that's the story for today. Life is good, and uh, so long uh, Corner Brook until 3 o'clock, only because I remain skeptical that his, his dirt road is going to be uh, enduro friendly, not GSA with 200 pounds of shit friendly. Goodbye Pulp Factory. The Pulp Factory smells like grapefruit, by the way, which is kind of interesting, and the, the grapefruit smell covers our hotel. It was a really, really nice... Uh, aromatic experience last night. Uh, Quarterbrook is definitely the, the biggest city that we have uh, experienced so far in Newfoundland. Uh, actually, you know, a long time. We haven't been in a city this big in a really, really long time. And, oh, no, there is a great food again. <laughs> yeah, we have been in a city like this since uh, Quebec City was probably the net latest, largest big city since then, so. It was very refreshing. Maybe that's just the pine oil talking. <laughs> all right, well, that's all for now. Supposed to see some waterfalls today, so that'll be cool. I'll tell you what, having a town right next to this paper mill sucks. It smells like grapefruit and it's like raining from stuff coming out of the factory. I ain't gonna lie, I would like to come back here in the winter time just to see how brutal it really is. All right, look at that. That looks like uh, BB-8 pulled off. You see the waterfall coming off the hill? Man, I hope that comes out on the... Ah, fire, jeez, getting stung in the back. Oh. Ah. We got a uh, waterfall here coming from seemingly nowhere. I mean, it's probably the Memphis Natural Spring up there, but the. Uh, so we have this uh, awesome natural waterfall here. Oh, it's skated off. Get into that. Um, really gorgeous. Uh, it looks like like there was a spring up there or something. It's just crazy to see them. I mean, elevation right now, 96. That's about 800 feet up there. And there's just this huge waterfall. I want to get the drone out and fly to it, but the winds are pretty high right now. So I'm going to insert a clip here of him screaming, but um, I hope that comes out on it. Ah, fire! We were riding along, I looked behind, he wasn't there anymore, so I came back and he was half naked, and he had two big bug bites on his neck. Turns out he's allergic to bees or anything stinging? No, it had to be a bee or a wasp. Are you allergic to both? I'm allergic to one of the two. Okay. One of the two. So I gave him some Benadryl, which means he's going to be passing out on the road here in a second. So we're just going to play it by ear. If I look back and he's gone again, then I'll expect to bring the ratchet straps with me and pull him back up. I hope that comes out on it. Ah, fire! <laughs> just put a cone next to me, and if it goes around me. <laughs> I'll put a little, little turn signal next to you. Yeah. <laughs>
Well, now that we got that out of the way, got stung by a bee twice in the back of the neck. Stripped naked. Well, not quite, but I felt like it. Turn this thing down. Well, anyway, there's still a beautiful waterfall. Forever, forever being joined with the memory of being just absolutely stabbed in the back by a bee or a wasp. I guess this is my first voiceover of the whole uh, day so far. So, uh, great day overall. We went to Lark Harbor from um, Corner Brook. Uh, Went on some ATV trails, crashed twice today, and then uh, took the longest way possible down to the ferry uh, through a bunch of ATV trails. So this is a long video. There was just so much I couldn't cut it all down. I mean, we started with um, uh, two hours of content down to 47 minutes. So I, I know it's long. I'm really sorry. But uh, I'm not an editor, I'm not a professional videographer, and I'm just um, struggling to cut all this down to something that's uh, good for mobile phones and stuff, you know. But look how gorgeous this is. And we're down, if you look at the, where the jut out down there where the hill is, before the hill, at the left of it, there's a, that's where we are in Lark Harbor in a few minutes, so... Um, yeah, just some of these islands, man. It, it was just the the west coast of of Newfoundland was really really spectacular. By the way, it is Friday at midnight when I'm recording this. By the way, um, so <laughs> not, not my cheery self. But yeah, we we just thought this was one of my favorite days of the trip, uh, only because of the scenery quality of riding and it was just breathtaking we really 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 loved it so i hope you enjoy this video i'm sorry it's long so i want to come back here with the family in the truck so bad I mean, this is beautiful today, and I can't imagine how much we missed yesterday with the, the weather being crappy and really foggy. I cannot believe how beautiful Newfoundland is. I mean, we gotta go back down this one road. It's like 36 kilometers right back to the town we came from. This is the only road in and out. I mean, so anybody who lives down here, man, they, it's like an hour drive just to go and come back with a gallon of milk. Well, we have uh, come out to the middle of nowhere here. We actually kept riding, we came down a public access road way over there and then started coming down this way. And uh, eventually it turned into this nonsense. I almost lost it because it went from nice hard pack to like, nope, real fast. But uh, we are at, uh, where is this? Port what? Uh, lock. lock something. The very edge of the island, past, uh, or the, the peninsula, past uh, Corner Brook. And there's actually an island out there where people uh, live. There you go. There's actually houses out there, there's no way to get there except for by boat. And I don't see like a public ferry, I just see the little dinghies going back and forth across the waterway there. I mean, this is definitely a beach that I would totally ride on on the GS if I had no shit on it, but not loaded up, no way. So I'll give you guys a quick 360 tour. Assuming that a horse fly doesn't bite me while I'm standing here. There's some waterfalls way off in the distance over there. Yep. Pretty nice.
This is my third attempt to get the freaking drone to follow me. I started recording. I put the drone on my uh, tank bag, and we started driving off this direction. And we got to the very end. We're past the boat there, and like, oh, the drone didn't move. <laughs> Still a beautiful shot, but it did not get us riding. So I'm trying to get some action shots in this trip. I didn't get a single action shot, which is a bummer, but. Still a good shot, though. Oh, it fails. Yeah. All right. How's your balance? <laughs> Is it? <laughs> Does it uh, hit the highway? Will it hit the highway eventually? Yeah, I'll come back yeah. down. How narrow is it? A single track? Uh, probably about from here to your bike. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. How's the mud looking? I haven't done any trails in a while. Okay. All right, so we're going to, uh, <laughs> we can go back through Corner Brook, but he wants to try this trail that comes back on the Trans-Canadian Highway about 50 clicks south of Corner Brook. And we're going to see how he, uh, how we do. The guys in the small little dual sports were wishy-washy about it. They said, you know, if you got good balance, good skills, decent tires, you can do it. It's about wide as a car. So uh, we're used to that. And uh, we're going to give it a shot. So this was uh, Lock Harbor. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> this is pretty. We're behind a Harley, too, so we're, we're good in that regards. If he's going down the road, then we're fine. Look at this. I guess this is the end of the paved road. There's the trail over there to the left. Well, it looks pretty good, actually. They said that the worst part's the first part where all the trucks go down and run it up, and then uh, after that it gets really smooth. You ain't coming over here and anything about an adventure bike. Well, not from New York anyway. Oh my gosh, look at that city. I'm gonna stop and take a picture of that if I can. And you know, back home I don't mind doing these kind of things, but here I'm a little bit more careful, which leads me to make more mistakes really because uh, you know, the, the, the uh, risk is that I really have a serious injury or dirt the bike. So I'm, I'm a little bit more careful and not just flying because I'm not, you know, 10 miles from home. So uh, we'll see if this, if this trail goes all the way down to the uh, ferry, this is gonna become a new road for a lot of our friends. I think we're okay. I have no gloves, but I'll put them on the next stop. No? First. Oh, yeah, that was easy. I really hate these tires. They're street tires, which they are. It's pretty though. I guess you're going straight, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's going straight, baby. Okay. This was fun. It'd be more fun if I was unloaded and I could absolutely rip on it. Ah. I gotta keep remembering what gear I'm in. All right, we're close. There we go. 
So we spoke to some ATV guys, some side-by-side -side guys that were up there who thought they we were crazy for already doing the part we did. And they uh, they said, you can continue on back to the highway, but uh, York Harbor, but um, you're probably gonna regret it. He's like, these bikes are fine for it, but uh, you're gonna need some knobbies and uh, a lot less shit on the back. Cause it's gonna be a lot of rocks, big old rocks that are loose, lots of sand. And the sand gets goopy and muddy at times. It takes, you know, them going into four wheel drive to get, get up that hill up there. He said so, and once you're on that hill, you're pretty much committed, so. After my fall a few minutes ago, again, this is like my sixth fall this week, and I'm pretty pissed off that I keep falling. Uh, we just decided to head back the other direction. What's up, dude? And I did, you know, I think BB-8 would have kept going, but I don't really want to uh, push my luck today. We're still a long way from home, and I need the bike to keep functioning. It's like all I do is ride off road with nothing on it at all. And then when it falls a bunch of times, I can pick it up, but I'm gonna clean my nose up real quick. Yeah. Well, we're back in corner brook. Rub, there's paper mills over there. Or I thought that's paper mill. We uh, just went up to uh, get some a diner here, getting some lunch. I'm really craving some citrus. I never eat fruit at home and I'm really craving an orange or something. It's been you know, diner food or rehydrated meals for the past week. So I need some like, I could use like a gigantic Cobb salad or something with like oranges and banana. So this, I'm gonna go to the grocery store and grab a couple of oranges and eat those things up. I'm not having a moment where like I'm not myself. Like I'm crashing way more than I usually do and uh, missing a bunch of things, missing some turns, you know, feeling like I'm sluggish and reacting to things. I really need to like, it's getting dangerous, I think. I need to like, I don't know if I can stop and truly unwind because I'm not home, but you know, maybe one week is my limit. I don't know. Just thinking out loud for a second. All right. We are done with lunch, done at Corner Brook, heading east. We're about to go south on uh, Trans Canada, down to Port Basque, Vasquez. Uh, it's three o'clock, so we'll probably be there by five or so. A little bit exploring around the area, but then we'll quickly get over to the port. And uh, I don't know Nova Scotia, so this was kind of a farewell to Newfoundland. And that's okay. I mean, we're we're gonna uh, gonna we had a blast here. You know, it was in uh, Labrador, Newfoundland, that I had all of my accidents so far and drops, crashes, whatever you want to call them. Nose is all cut up. Knees are really bruised. My uh, whole body is pretty much sore. Lots of wind and such. So I'm I'm pretty I'm really ready to be over in Nova Scotia. And I, I actually am hoping it's a little bit more um, developed, you know, smoother roads and such, less wind, but no guarantees, right? So uh, that's it for now. See you guys in Port Basque. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's still going. <laughs> he doesn't need uh, highway pegs. He's got his own. <laughs> right below the handlebars. That is horribly dangerous, and I uh, <laughs> don't recommend you try this at home. <laughs> but do try this in Newfoundland. <laughs> well, we are in Stephenville. Just a slight detour. Taking this uh, aircraft road here, that, uh, hoping to see some planes landing. Trail of the iron, that's pretty cool. You know, we were right on the ocean. And uh, we're about to make a louis here because the, uh, the there's a little dirt road there that goes to the side, but it doesn't connect back to the main strip. It just kind of goes around the airstrip there. Yeah, Stephenville. Not much here, but 
it was a cheap detour. Alright. Oh, back at it. Look at this. Wow. That's a pretty cool view. Only 300 feet elevation, too. This is the Jewel of the Wetlands, aka Stephenville Crossing. We're just taking a little bit of a roundabout, basically, because we have some time to kill, but uh, we'll still be at the ferry by 5 o'clock. So let's see this view here. It's a cool little like peninsula thing, a little farm tower, a couple of fishing boats out there. Uh, we've already lost that height, I guess. There you go. It's pretty nice, actually. Yeah. It's like a cozy little beach town inside this little peninsula because the, the mountains go that way and they also go around that way down to the uh, ferry. So, um, this neat little Peninsula in a very similar shape of the uh, the Queen's Necklace in uh, India in Bombay. How it wraps around, but of course there's a million people living in that little alcove. Nice smell of salt air. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Well, we're about 30 minutes or so away from the ferry port. Had to stop and take a pee break. That's about it. Although it was kind of pretty, thought I'd show you guys the view as we loop around this little corner here. I haven't seen a single moose on this trip and I am actually pretty happy about it. I know what moose look like. They are beautiful. They are gentle creatures and they will kill you if you hit them. So, so I'm thinking, hey, what have I not seen this week? Uh, moose, well, good. <laughs> All right, well, we're, uh, we're doing pretty good here with the time, and we will continue on. It's uh, 5.09. They said be there no later than 9.30 p.m., so uh, I wanted to get there by 6. I think we'll be able to get there at 6, get our tickets, check in, and then uh, go explore the town a little bit before we have to uh, board and lock up our bikes. So we're passing this really cool, like, mountain range thing right now. Um, I'm getting a lot of messages about uh, high wind warnings. There's a sign back there that says this area has winds, recorded winds up to 200 kilometers an hour, uh, you know, last 500 years or something. So uh, and there's been a few signs for like RVs and trailers, be, be careful. Look at this, isn't that beautiful? Uh, just be careful. I mean, the average day of windiness here can't be any worse than the um, the wind we experienced two days ago. But it's good to, good to have a warning, I guess. I just don't think we're going to yield to that warning unless we actually feel something. Oh, it's now 70 here. Let's slow a little bit down here. We're going down there, buddy. If, it, if there's a little sign that's new, I don't want to piss off some uh, cops. Look at that, though. Isn't that gorgeous? Wow. There's, like, all these waterfalls and stuff. So, uh, high wind warning. Hopefully we're not impacted by it. It's just a normal day. Got more detours thanks to the Garmin here. Might take them. It looks a little scenic.
Well, we're going down this uh, middle of nowhere road. Oh, there's an ATV coming. Let them go past first. <laughs> Kids are dropping off. This is, by the way, this is where Garmin told me to go, based on uh, windy roads. It's a little interesting, isn't it? <laughs> Again, Garmin, I want windy roads, and I end up getting uh, rail trails. Not complaining yet, even though I said I would take it easy on these kind of roads. It's definitely fun though. Nice little detour off the interstate for a few minutes. I guess that's the ocean. I think so. Well, we made it out of the trail. We're getting back on uh, Trans-Canadian in half a mile here. Kind of in some little cove, colony, village, whatever you want to call it here. Everyone has ATVs here. But there were more ATVs but trails back there than there were roads. So, not too surprised about that. That was fun. All right. Oh, we could have gone down there, I guess. I saw that little thing, but it dead ended. So I thought, ah, I'm not gonna try to go for something crazy like that. But a uh, little bridge down there, a little outlook or overlook. All right, man. So we're about five miles away from the next turn, but is that turn actually like... Oh, uh, Garmin's doing another weird thing to me. Ah, we'll see what happens to that. Yes. I'm almost coming down to the ferry. Well, Garmin's taking me down one more path that might get pretty gnarly, but it's along the coast. It's like right on the water, <laughs> which means sand. Uh, but we're still doing okay on time, so we're going to hop on this thing real quick and see what happens. BB-8 seems to just be content 
going wherever as long as we're still going towards the right path this could get pretty gnarly though um, so we'll see I mean it's, it's only adding a couple of miles but it, I don't know it's either paved or it's really really bad eh. and we found dirt we'll see how gnarly this shit gets I get pretty bad. It's this for 0.6 miles that we're hanging a right. Well, there's a power line. That's a good sign. Hey, we found a beach. This is pretty cool. Now it says the road keeps going. Is that navigable? It says it is. Well, it's sandy. It's not totally shitty. It's just a lot of sand. So he's going straight through them, huh? Is it muddy? Doesn't look that bad, actually. <laughs> look at this view. I can't look at the view because I gotta look at. That's what it says. We're uh, 3.7 miles. Let's go. Looks good to me.
I gotta keep looking down to see if my phone's attached. I'm waiting for do this one of these times and it not be. Trying to enjoy avoid the water as much as possible because I don't have my good pants, my waterproof pants on and I don't want to be stuck in that ferry for hours. The lighthouse way out there. I don't want to be stuck in that ferry for hours in wet pants. Uh, I wonder what this morning. And we're back underway. Caution, wash out ahead. Ooh, that's interesting. I'm so paranoid to get in a flat tire, catching a sharp rock. So paranoid. Tell you what, the bike was, it was empty down here, I'd be getting some freaking air time. See, he keeps looking back to see, see that I'm not dead. That's something I do not do for him. Every time he's had an altercation with things, I uh, I don't know until like a mile and a half later. But I get in my zone of doing things, and then finally I'll sit down and look in the mirrors and be like, well, he's gone. That phone's still there. No low air pressure warning light. I wonder if they run a machine down through here and grade this every once in a while. Or if it's not that much of a tourist, you know, revenue source, they don't worry about it. Man, these whoops are giving my fully loaded bike a workout. It's like basically riding with a passenger on the back. Ooh, these are some good ones. Let her float, let her float. Little wheelie. Oh, unavoidable mud. Uh, if I have my KTM right here, I'd only be touching every third one of these. The bike's handling it fairly well. It's just I'm paranoid about the shocks at this point. I haven't only bottled out once in this trip so far. And that was because uh, I kept flying off a ledge. Ah. She dead? Yeah. Oh, my phone. I'm still running. Almost to the end of it, anyway. Uh -huh, I can hear rocks clanking off my center stand. Oop, there's a little drop off. Ah, uh, here's more bushwhacking. Make sure you get that giant high rib in the middle. Hate it when you have that. I wonder how much the mouth breathing is going to be on this. Like, God, he's like shredding the plans. It sucks because he doesn't have a right hand guard at the moment. So, if he catches a good branch, it pulls his brake lever. I guess this is really going to tell whether that toolbox intersects that stupid uh, possum scraper mud flap on the back. Ooh, big water. First gear water. Oh, Adam chose correctly. Bet you, you know, he's really wishing he was on his beta. I wonder if I can find an outlet on the boat. Actually, really smooth doing that kind of stuff. Unavoidable mud.
think he's his first or second. the end. Alright. Good times had it, Richmond High. We've been doing. Yeah. I haven't been, you know, like hard on it yet, so didn't wear them down. Yeah, oh, times looking good. When we were going across that the, the bridge there where the real sand was. Yeah. If you look behind you to see the lighthouse. No, like I didn't see dead it. Dead set behind us with off the uh -huh. is a big lighthouse. I need to start pointing one of my mirrors up when I'm standing so I can see you. Exactly. That was my problem. I kept actually making myself fuck up because I kept turning around, turning around looking at you and then I would sit down and I had to get all squirrely. That's why I keep leaving you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it makes sense. I'm not faulting you for it. street level area, then I'll sit down and look at my mirror and I'm like, all right, we're good. So we're at the ferry. Is that our ferry? I think it's our ferry, right? And uh, they said be here no later than 9.30. Well, it's 6.43. I think we're here on time. Just want to get a good spot upstairs. So you let us on, then that'll be good. Oh, this should put us to sleep. I think the jack attack was way better than this. Yeah. I think the gravy and the jack attack was way better. A bird shit on my head while we were talking. While well, we're getting on the uh, ferry, to Nova Scotia now. It's uh, 10 o'clock. Got here way too early. But, uh, this ship is huge. It's gonna be a long night. Mine's still a little bit loose. 